All right, it's time for another Pod Bible podcast. And today I am joined by the creator of Discovering Dementia. It's Penny Bell. Hello, Penny. Hello, Adam. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Uh, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Yes, I'm fine. Good, good. Have you been listening well, to any podcasts? I've been listening to loads. I mean, that's pretty much all I do. And <laughs> um, I'm currently a, a podcast judge for the British Podcast Award, so I've been listening to even more. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, I'd love to touch upon that uh, maybe towards the end of this, because obviously your podcast, Discovering Dementia, has previously won an award at the British Podcast Awards. So be lovely to, to, to talk about that but before we do there'll be people who maybe uh, haven't heard of the pod uh, or don't know what it's all about could you give us a little bit of background how, how it came to be yes um it's basically my mum has dementia and um when she was first diagnosed we found that there wasn't really very much support so whilst we were lucky because lots of people do struggle to get even a diagnosis after she was diagnosed we just we got medication which was brilliant because she was able to access that but there was no other support it was just you were just sort of cast adrift and um, at the time I asked you do we come back in six months or a year or you know is there anyone we can talk to as, as things progress and there was just there just didn't seem to be anything at all mm. so if, so in order to sort of progress and find out what do we do I started researching and I did find things but I also realized I couldn't be the only person in that situation that there must be other people out there also with a diagnosis not knowing what to do and I thought well if I just record what we're doing what happens to us what I find maybe it'll help someone else that was you know that was the kind of basis from which we went forward um and Wonderful. plus my mum my mum was um very keen to kind of talk about her dementia and um recognize straight away that there can be a stigma to it and was keen to kind of kind of break that down so um she was all on board with kind of talking about how she was feeling and what was happening for her and that's how it started and how did you decide upon uh, a podcast as the format because i know um you know there's probably a fair amount of blogs or websites or um, maybe even sort of community chat rooms that kind of things that can provide support is it that you'd um looked and there were no podcasts or did you have an interest in making podcasts how did how did that happen yeah i have um, a background in radio so um i trained and worked in newsrooms for a long time um i then moved into other kind of areas of work um, around communications but um, I always loved audio and so to me it was the obvious obvious way to do it to share what we're doing and plus you can really capture I think quite um, intimate moments by just recording something simply on your phone because it's just there and it's not intrusive um, so to me that was the way to go absolutely. Yeah, lovely. I love the idea of the fact that you've got these conversations with various different people and obviously having those conversations with your mum. It's something I've thought about doing with my parents now that I'm working in podcasting and I have all the equipment. It's just to go to their house, not record anything for release, but just record some chats, asking them about their lives and something that my children will be able to listen to and that kind of thing, sort of documenting and archiving conversations. It's a lovely, lovely idea. Um, so could you tell listeners about sort of the, the, the format of, of the podcast, how um, are the episodes laid out? What can people expect? Are they all similar? Are they all different? Uh, they're all different, but they all follow a theme. So it's like a, a journey almost that you're going on, um, because as I'm discovering things, I'm turning it into an episode. So it's not like a podcast where every week there's a new episode, a new mm. person to interview. It's very much well, what have I learned this time? Okay, well, that that perhaps I need to know more about that and then follow that up. So the first episode ever starts with just mum and I talking about her diagnosis. And from that, me thinking I need to know more. And then I found out about something called the Alzheimer's show, which kind of showcases, if you like, um, different ways you can support someone who's got Alzheimer's or a form of dementia. And I wanted to go to that. So I then went to that, took my microphone, found out some more things, met some other people, um, one of whom was a lady called Jill living with young onset dementia and she was happy for me to talk to her so then I spent a day with Jill and learned about how she manages it so each episode kind of one leads to the next and as much as possible I've tried to go in person and speak to people um, mm. because I feel like you can capture so much more um, if you're able to do that I mean you can, I still do do interviews sort of um, like we are now kind of over over the internet but um yeah. I you know really 
like meeting people face to face and I think with dementia as well especially if you're speaking to someone who has dementia I think that's kind of an easier setup yes yeah I can imagine so um and I noticed when I was looking back at your episodes beforehand that your first series was um from 2018 and then you returned for the second series in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic how did how did that work you know were, were you always planning on coming back for that second series um and how, how, how did you manage to get that done and out during the pandemic yeah. it's um well it, it uh, luckily I'd recorded quite a lot of stuff before we went mm. into the lockdown so that was so fortunate I mean literally by the skin of my teeth I'd spent um a few days in Devon recording um at the um Philo project which is a kind of day support centre if you like um which takes place in people's homes um and that was literally just before the pandemic I was able to go there and go to some of the groups and things so by the time the pandemic hit I was um kind of more into the editing mode which was very okay. fortunate however I did want to carry on and so like everyone else I moved online and I did um do some interviews that way and I spoke um towards Christmas time to um someone from Dementia UK an Admiral Nurse they're nurses that specialize in supporting families looking after someone with dementia and um we spoke about Christmas and lockdown and how you know hard it is to have dementia so mm. in a way that was I was able to sort of capture that um moment and then also when I was doing those recordings we could see that um the Covid crisis was coming and um I'd spoken to some people working at um, Exeter University who were doing all sorts of research into dementia and so I was able to see you know how that was going to affect their research and mm. how they were not going to be able to support people in the same way it was sort of that initial panic that we all felt about how are we going to manage this how are we going to go forward with it so I did sort of capture some of that I think in the very beginning Excellent. it wasn't easy it wasn't easy it's also hard because I'm also looking after my mum who has dementia well, yes. and trying to manage all of that as well yeah yeah I can't imagine but then I suppose you know for a lot of people during that time having a project or something to focus on was quite quite nice as well to something to keep busy um you know a target to get those episodes out but yeah I congratulate you on actually managing to do it um <laughs> so so if if somebody was coming to this podcast uh, fresh maybe they have an interest in dementia maybe they have uh, somebody who has uh, dementia in their family um is this the kind of podcast that you'd say go back to episode one and just start and listen to everyone or would they be able to scroll through and maybe perhaps see if there's a particular subject um that is of interest how would you approach the pod as a new listener i think you can do either of those things to be honest I, my goal is to have episodes that you can dip into um that match what you're experiencing at the time because mm. i've found with dementia it's a real roller coaster ride things might seem okay for a little while then you have suddenly a, a dip and everything changes and I know everybody's experience is different but um, that's what I found so my idea was you can listen from the start of course and get to know mum and hear from other people but also it's there as a catalogue so you can dip into it when when you need to. Okay. Great. Um, let's touch upon the uh, the award then at the British Podcast Awards last year. You won the was it best well being podcast. Um, did, were you did you attend the event? Were you there at the open I did. air? Yes. Yeah, my, it was very touch and go because we had COVID in the family just right. beforehand, and I wasn't sure, but um, I so I really wanted to go regardless of everything. Um, mm. And we made it. It was great. Yeah, well, it was an amazing day. Best day of my life that I can remember for a very long time that's brilliant yeah that's so <laughs> lovely um so you won you you got the uh you got the award how how has that been has did you find that actually was a big boost for your listeners have you had people reaching out that, that found the podcast from that yes definitely um a big a massive boost and people noticing and asking me now to be part of things that um perhaps I hadn't done before so I've done quite a few things with Dementia UK now and uh, giving them sort of information about how I manage my mum with dementia which they then put on their website we did something over Mother's Day um, so yes I've definitely had a lot more people approach me and ask to sort of collaborate on things which I know wouldn't have happened before I have to say I've never had any problems with um, asking people to do interviews and having positive responses um, people just seem to want to be involved and talk about dementia so that's that's been great but but I, I, it has given me even more access to people I think 
from, from winning the award and I'm more determined than ever that I want to keep you know sharing and but it, I am finding um, obviously dementia is progressive and mm. my mum my mum is 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 getting worse and my involvement with her care changes over time but it is quite hard to live the dementia experience and do the recordings and things that go along with it you're just kind of involved in a way that you perhaps might not be on on a different kind of podcast I guess yeah I wondered about that because yeah you're obviously experiencing that in your own life and you'll have tough days and tough experiences and moments and then you're coming to to work on the podcast where then you're hearing other people's stories and sort of taking on a bit of that burden as well so it must be must be quite overwhelming at times there are podcasts that I can think of simply you know things like grief cast where where Carrie Ard Lloyd is you know she has her own grief but then she's constantly talking to other people about their grief and I wonder how they that, you know what their headspace can, can be like on a day-to-day basis when it becomes a bit much but then I suppose with yours as you said you've it's not a weekly podcast you don't have to turn up with a new episode every Tuesday if you need to take time and space you can would that be right yeah, yeah I think that's exactly it and um I, I think in a way that's quite important for for a while I used to beat myself up about that because I thought oh people expect you know some but then I've realized I do absolutely need that you need time to digest it you know something yeah. happens and you're, you're probably not the only person who's experienced that but you just need a moment to just get past it and then you can go and find someone else who's experienced it and then it helps to sort of put it into perspective so in a, in a way it is a cathartic thing to then move forward and record things and I am recording with mum all the time even though things are quite different now um so and that helps me also to share what's happening to her with the wider family too Mm. um so yeah it's it is a strange thing somebody asked me actually after I won the award I did an interview and um they said what will happen when your mum gets worse will you carry on how will you manage that and and that literally at that moment I hadn't even thought about it and um and I, 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 it just made me, it just prompted me to kind of consider, well, what will I do? And then before I knew what was happening, I was sort of in that moment and I have just carried on. So, right. um, yeah, because I think it's important people understand all of it. I think in, with, with the very early stages and mid stages of dementia, there's so much as a person living with dementia you can still do and you should be doing and people should be supporting you to do it. But um, as time goes on, it, it, it does change. And um I think I hadn't quite put myself in that place. I'm definitely there now, um, but I'm still wow. recording and doing things. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine there'll be listeners who will have been there from day one and been there on the journey and they'll want to hear what's happening and, you know, will have made those connections with you and your mum. So yeah, well, it's a wonderful thing that you're doing. And I think it would, no doubt it will be helping a lot of people and it's clearly sort of helping you as well. And uh, you've got an award to prove that it's a good podcast. And now you've been on the Pod Bible podcast. So, you know, it's That's working true, out yes. well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's lovely to be able to do things with you as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Penny. And um, yeah, listeners, uh, Penny will be back to recommend some of the podcasts that she loves to listen to as well on future episodes. Um, but in the meantime, go and catch up. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming on, Penny. It's a pleasure.